Well, uh, I would first certainly like to thank you, uh, Dame Jillian, and the Foreign Policy Association for this great honor. I am truly privileged to be here tonight, and we at NASDAQ certainly recognize the great work that the FPA has done, and we appreciate the ability for this organization to bring together domestic and international stakeholders to participate in discussions and debates of true substance. Sometimes that's hard to find these days. Uh, as CEO of NASDAQ, the public company, and NASDAQ, the developer of listing rules for our 3,000 companies, I have a comprehensive and unique insight as uh, the, both the creator and the user of these listing rules. We at NASDAQ have the great pleasure of eating our own cooking. Uh, and when we think about these listing rules, it's important to recognize today there is no explicit NASDAQ or SEC rule that mandates carbon or climate change disclosure. The materiality standard is the only guide. In February of 2010, the SEC did in fact notice the vagueness of that standard and highlighted back in 2010 that climate change could in fact be material. In 2015, 62 investors banded together representing over $1.9 trillion of assets under management and they put, uh, petitioned the SEC for better climate reporting. In March of this year, the SEC again obliquely mentioned that climate change could be material. Then in April of this year, we had a breakthrough. The SEC published a concept release and for the first time in one of these concept releases, it directly addressed the question of carbon assets and climate change as a, as a risk. Now this concept release is open through comment uh, through July and certainly I invite everybody in this room uh, to particip uh, participate in that. So when we think about from 2010 to 2016, we're certainly witnessing what I call a slow evolution towards regulated disclosure of carbon emission and climate change. Now it's important to recognize as we have this slow evolution, there is a parallel track going on. And it's a parallel track of voluntary and private efforts. And as Dame Jillian mentioned, we were one of the founding members of the sustainable stock exchanges at the UN, and that was five years ago. And I'm proud to say, from our humble beginnings, we now have 48 global members in this group. We also founded and currently chair the Sustainability Working Group at the World Federation of Exchanges. We also self-report to a number of different organizations. One is the Carbon Disclosure Project, the other is the Global Reporting Initiative, and of course, the United Nations Global Compact. So we're proud of our efforts here. But it's important to recognize that fully 84% of NASDAQ listed companies provide some level of public uh, disclosure on their carbon emissions. This is again voluntary and has developed just in the last number of years. Uh, so you'd have to say the private efforts are significantly more advanced than the public efforts. Now, we think about this in context, it's important to recognize that U.S. GAAP is famous as the most rules-focused of all the global accounting regimes. Other accounting regimes have more of a stronger principle-based approach uh, to how they regulate. So it's important to recognize while I support both the public track and the private track, you have to realize that the public track at the end of the road will be legalistic and it will be enabled but also constrained by the rules that have to be developed in this legalistic framework. Uh, so it's also important to recognize when you get into this legalistic framework, as precise as numbers can be, they still can be very difficult things to pin down. And when we think about our gap reporting results, and I think John can certainly agree with me, it's incredible how much judgment goes into what a number should be. So as I stand here today and think about how we're going to go forward with climate uh, uh, really discussions and transparency, it's important to recognize there's so many dimensions to this. 
and I would strongly encourage the private efforts to move forward at a very rapid pace, and I think in the fullness of time, these private efforts have to be more valuable than anything that has to be constrained by a legalistic viewpoint developed by governmental regulators. Now, the other thing you hear about with respect to uh, being a public company is the focus on the short term and how does climate change disclosure uh, relate uh, to short-term management of corporations today. So the first thing I would say, it's important to recognize as a public company, uh, it is truly a matter of transparency and the proper investment thesis. One of the things I'm most proud about of NASDAQ is the biotechnology industry that is public on our market. This biotechnology industry is changing the world day by day. As we map the genome, we've certainly figured out now, a decade on, how to come up with new immunotherapies for various cancers, and cancers are quickly turning into a chronic condition. Now, it's important to recognize when these companies come public, typically they have no revenue, but they have a dream. And as long as you communicate that to investors, investors don't care about the quarter. They care about the evolution over time. So I certainly maintain that the short term is never in conflict with the long term. It is about having the proper transparency to your investors so they know exactly what your business mission is. So as we think about this climate change and this carbon emission issue that we have, you have to understand that operating for the long term, which is certainly what you're going to do when you're aware of your CSR responsibility, will inform positively the entire life cycle of a company, an economy, and a planet. So I thank you for your time today, and I thank you for your award. Thank you.